change your way of living. Hold your Savior's hand and you'll go walking across that bridge of glory land. So we are here in Charlotte at the Holmes Creek Bridge. I'm here with Mike Santosuso. Correct. He drove on his motorcycle here to 100 covered bridges in Vermont in under a year, and we're going to find out why. I wanted to go to unfamiliar roads, unfamiliar places, see parts of Vermont I hadn't seen before, and learn a bit about my state, and visiting the covered bridges was a good way to do it. So this bridge here is the Holmes Creek Bridge. It was the first bridge that I rode across when I started this challenge. It is the one that's closest to the lake. It is the one at the lowest elevation in Vermont. My dad always had motorcycles when I was little. I got my first bike uh, when I turned 50 because my dad had offered me one of his old motorcycles. I did 1,000 miles the first year. I did 2,000 the second year. So I got this bike last year. And I did 3,000 miles. So last winter, I was looking for places to go. I had pretty much done the bucket list rides for motorcycles in Vermont. I'd been through Smuggler's Notch. I did the App Gap and the other five gaps. I went to the Floating Bridge. I'd been to Mount Equinox and I was looking for new places to go. When I was investigating the 251 Club, I came across the Covered Bridge Club. And that seemed a much more attainable goal. I had specific places to go to and there was a lot of history to be learned and, and it seemed like a good challenge and kind of what I was looking for. So that's what I decided to do is ride my motorcycle to all 100 covered bridges in Vermont. There are at this point 100 covered bridges left in Vermont. There were 101 when I started planning but we lost the bridge in Troy due to a snowmobile fire in February and three of those are technically owned by New Hampshire because they cross from New Hampshire into Vermont. When I set out to visit the bridges, it was a personal quest. It wasn't something that I was really doing for anyone else except for myself. And I was documenting it for myself and sharing it with some of my friends. It's some exhaust. I did generate some interest in the bridges by posting in other places and motorcycle groups and covered bridge enthusiasts. I think it's important that we, that we bring attention to the bridges because it's a big part of tourism and it's part of our history and part of our identity. It's kind of the big identity with Vermont other than maple syrup, even though we don't have the most covered bridges of any state, we just have the highest concentration of them because we're such a small state. It wasn't really a, a you know, escape the pandemic activity, although it's great social distancing and I got out of the house and I wasn't cooped up, so. The typical motorcycle wave is two fingers down here. Well, I didn't necessarily start riding as a midlife crisis, but I suppose from the outside looking in, maybe that's, maybe that's what this is. Honestly, for me, it's a lot of solitude. I enjoy my time in my own helmet uh, with my own thoughts. It's almost meditative and to just be out in the beautiful state of Vermont and to see all the beautiful things that we have. The riding here is really excellent. Farmland with beautiful views. We have big sweeping corners on country roads. We have some twisties if you want to go up in the mountains. A lot of dirt roads if that's your thing and you can do all of that in one day in Vermont. Some of my favorite bridges are of course the the Cornish Windsor Bridge that goes from Windsor, Vermont to Cornish, New Hampshire. It's the longest historic covered bridge in the United States, 449 feet. I really like the Pulp Mill Bridge in Middlebury. That's a, that's a double barrel as they call it. The Green River Bridge, that's the southernmost bridge and it was the hardest to get to. The Fisher Railroad Bridge is really unique. It's got like a cupola along the top to let the smoke out from the steam engines from back in the day. Covered bridges were you know, designed and the historic ones all built, that's all there was was horses. And, and a lot of them have the sides on them, people say, to keep the horses from getting scared as they got over the water. A lot of the old bridges, you'll see signs that say like, $2 fine for crossing faster than a walk. That's a horse's walk. At the end of May, I participated in a charity ride called the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, which raises awareness and money for men's mental health and prostate cancer. One of the great things about motorcycling in Vermont is people are nice. 
you know, you get lost, you need some directions. People are very friendly. There's great places to stop for food or creamy. I've been in a lot of bands over the years. One of my bluegrass bands, Big Spike, we had a song called Emily's Bridge that was about the Goldbrook Bridge in Stowe. It's supposedly haunted. Wait for me in the covered bridge, my sweet, sweet Emily. You can learn more about the 100 covered bridges in Vermont online at the Vermont Covered Bridge Society, and we will get stuck in Vermont for you again real soon. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> that, that concludes the video, portion of this video. Like all those dead bugs on my, on my leather pants. These are all dead bugs. <laughs> this is the part of motorcycling that I tell you about. If you don't like to kill bugs, motorcycling might not be for you. <laughs>